So consider the following linear model. So say you have a model like y is equal to 3x1. So here you call y as the response. So this is the response variable. And this x1 is called the predictor. So say you set x1 as 2, then the value of y would be 6. So say you set x1 as 5, then the value of y would be 15. So 3 times 5 is 15. So you can put a predictor in and you can get a response. But there is nothing special about this model. You could add a constant to it. So you have now have a new model, y is equal to 3x1 plus 5. So now say you put x1 as 0. So you get y as 5. So 3 times 0 is 0 plus 5 will give you 5. Now you put x1 as 1. So 3 times 1 will give you 3 plus 5 will give you 8. So you can keep changing values of x1 to get different values of y. So these are models. Now you can extend this model further to a multivariate model. So again here the response variable is y and x1, x2, x3 are predictors. So all of these are predictors. And this y is the response variable. Again you can put different values of x1, x2 and x3 to get a value of y. For example, say x1 you put as 1, x2 as 0 and x3 as 0. So this will give you y is equal to 3 times 1 is 3, 5 times 0 is 0, 0 0.3 times 0 is again 0, plus 10, this is 13. So you put 1, 0, 0 in, you get value of y as 13. So these are all linear models. So there is no power of x1 or x1 and x2 are not multiplied with each other. So in general, a linear model can be written like this. y is equal to alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus alpha n xn plus a constant term. So this is a general linear model. Now say you are given data. So say you are given a set of points. So, so y is a bunch of observations you have. So these are a bunch of values. So say there is a vector of values associated with y. So this could be like say 10 root 2 3 and so on. There's a vector of values here. Then you also have vectors of values for x1. You have vectors of value for x2. You have vectors of value for xn. So these are your observations. You somehow think that these vector values in x1, x2 and all the way to xn, all these impact y. That is the data you have collected on y, x1, x2, x3 and xn. This data should form a linear equation like this. So if you're able to form a linear equation like this from your set of data, then you can put in whatever values of x1, x2 you want and you will get a appropriate response variables. Because you could have only observed only a given set of values for the data, but once you have the equation, then you can put in any set of values. So if the data like this is given to you, you have a vector of values for y, then you have corresponding vector of values for x1, which could be 2, 0, 1, root 3 and so on. And then x2, x3, obviously the number of values in vector y is same as in x1 and same as in x2 and so on. You, you want to find the model parameters. You want to find alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n and then this constant, which best fits this data. That is the data given to you. Now this word best has a precise mathematical meaning. And this is obtained by minimizing errors. So this is obtained in calculus. What you have is first order conditions, which you set equal to zero. And from there you obtain the value of the parameters. But we are not going to worry about it because everything will be done in R. So let us first see how to read the data into your system. So my data is the data which you want to read in the system. You're going to read a table and this is the location. 
this is the location where the file is and this is the file and this entire part is the location so this is a website address you could give your own uh, address for your own drive so say it is in C drive you give the address and in the end you write the file name notice that you have forward slash here so this is a forward slash and in the website you will see if you enter the address it is a backward slash so rather than copy pasting the website address you have to change the slash so keep this in mind header I'm putting as true because I have already assigned the header so let us see the data we're just going to see first two rows of data so this is row one of data and this is row two of data so the data is just this y x1 and x2 so corresponding to y you have bunch of values of x1 and you have bunch of values of x2 again the number of values in y is same as the number of values in x1 which is same as the number of values in x2 so our objective is to find a model like this y is equal to alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus a constant so we are looking for a model which probably has this general form so that we can plug in any values of x1 and x2 and find corresponding value for y so the data is given to us and we want to determine this model to determine this model we will use this linear model function so this is the command my data dollar y this is a tilde sign then my data dollar x1 plus my data dollar x2 so these dollar signs means that this thing is coming from your set my data so this my data is right here so this my data you copy as such and this dollar y means in the my data set you're worried about y so y is getting fixed to x1 and x2 so y is like this so but this is the exact command so now everything is in your data set fit so this fit is nothing but your linear model now with the data frame we are going to find the coefficients alpha 1 alpha 2 and this constant c so this is the command for the coefficients it will give us the values of the coefficients we want that is alpha 1 alpha 2 and c and then we want to find the confidence interval because these values will only make sense with respect to the confidence interval so let us first focus on the values which we have obtained so these are the values which R will throw out at you once you run this command so now we have finally have the equation corresponding to the data we have fed in so this intercept is 59.70 so C is 59.70 so I'm writing C first and then this is alpha 1 this corresponds to x1 this minus 0.19 then you have 0.99 so this is our equation but the fundamental assumption in a linear model is that when you are minimizing these error terms you assume that these error terms are normally distributed so these error terms these are normally distributed with some mean mean is 0 and variance is sigma square so that mean is 0 and variance is sigma square so these values are not deterministic these are values coming from a distribution so these are values coming from a distribution and more precisely coming from a normal distribution so we need to focus on whether these values are statistically significant that is are they statistically different from 0 so notice that this value minus 0.19 comes from the confidence interval so this is 2.5 percent to 97.5 percent so that is minus 0.19 this is statistically the same as any of the values in the interval minus 1.5 to 1.11 similarly here 
point nine nine is same as any of the values you take from the interval point one five to one point eight three. Now notice that there is zero in this interval because it goes from minus one point five to one point one one. So this model is statistically the same as y equals to zero times x one plus point nine nine times x two plus fifty nine point seven zero. So again fifty nine point seven zero this is same as any of the values from fifty point two two to sixty nine point three nine. So the model this model is same as this model. So you can write the new model now as y equals to point nine nine x two plus fifty nine point seven zero. So we have dropped this term. So we have dropped this term completely because there is a zero here in the confidence interval. This confidence interval does not have zero. It starts from 0.15 and this confidence interval also does not have zero. It starts from 50.02. So this starts from a negative number and ends at a positive number. So obviously it has a zero in it. So you reduce this model to this. So this is our best fitting model given our data. Now you need to keep in mind that these two values are coming from confidence interval. This value was also coming from confidence interval and the confidence interval had zero in it. So we dropped it. So statistically speaking, this value is same or this model is same as this another model, which is say 0.99. This is coming from here is statistically same as any other point you draw from this interval. So say 1.2 also lies in this interval. So this is statistically same as 1.2x2 plus this 59.70 is drawn from this interval. So here 65 lies in the interval. So I'm just taking a value 65. So these two models are statistically the same. So now you could pick any number of values from the confidence interval. So you could have infinitely many models. So out of these infinitely many models, which are statistically same. So statistically they are same. we choose the model which is given here. That is these points are nothing but midpoints of the interval. This 0.99 is the midpoint of this interval and this 59.70 is midpoint of this interval. That is 50.02 to 69.39. Midpoint of this interval is 59.70. So you choose the midpoints of the interval because otherwise you could have infinitely many intervals. So the best fitting model is this given for our data. So again, to recap, you run the command, you first get a model like this. So this is the model which minimizes your errors. But then you have to see whether these coefficients are different from zero. So to check that, you check in the confidence interval whether there is a zero. So we saw corresponding to this value, there was a zero in the confidence interval. So you drop this value, you retained other two. And this is your model. So your model has this value and this value. And you have forgotten this value because it has a zero in the confidence interval. So the end of the story is you have been able to get a linear model corresponding to the data you have. So now you can feed in any value of x2 and find predictor value for uh, response value for y.